Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we will discuss about incoming spam filter deployment scenarios. We use spam filtering wherever we have email systems. Now these days we cannot receive an email without properly filtering legitimate emails from the spams. We fall into serious trouble when those emails even contains viruses and jeopardizes the whole organization's computer network. It's a mandatory precaution now to deploy spam filtering wherever we think about emails. Spam filter is required during both incoming and outgoing time. Here in this video, we will see what are the options during incoming time. On later video, I'll show you how to design the deployment for outgoing emails. We can deploy spam filter many ways based on our requirements but we will find these common scenarios I have described here almost everywhere. To make you understand very simply, I have prepared three designs here. First one is on-premise deployment. Second is deploying at nearby data center or local service provider network. And the third one is deploying at the public cloud environment. So let's discuss about these scenarios. Let's talk about on-premise spam filter. In this design, this is the most simplistic on-premise deployment. Just to give you the idea how an on-premise deployment look like, I have designed like this. On-premise spam filters may consist of a single server or several physical hardware based on the incoming email load. Every large organization also deploys their own on-premise setup with multiple hardwares and service provider also set up on-premise spam filter network to handle millions of mail per hour. If we want to set up for our office network, we can follow these guideline as is to make a simple setup. Here we can see our domain name is mailserverguru.com and we set up our DNS MX record here. All incoming mail for this domain will come to this server mx1.mailserverguru.com after receiving mail, it will scan and deliver to the primary mailbox server for our client's delivery. MX1's sole responsibility is to act as incoming mail server and it will uh, scan spam and viruses and it will deliver forward the clean email to the primary mailbox server. We can configure host firewall on the mailbox server so that it's uh, do not receive any mail from the internet except the scanner. As the both server are on premise, they can communicate through a private network. So we can make the scanner multi-homed. It will receive mail from internet through public IP and deliver to local server by using the private one. This scanner server can be physical or virtual machine. And if you have a lot of mail to take care, then we can have load balance here. If you want to see how to do incoming mail load balancing, I'll suggest you to visit my another video on my channel regarding incoming email load balancing. In this second design, we can deploy our spam filter at local ISP or data center. If we do not want to manage the physical hardware, power and cooling, then we can co-locate the server to them or we can rent one or more VPS from them and set up the spam filter there. In some cases, it is better than public cloud because we can communicate and troubleshoot with them faster. They will take care of the physical systems and we will manage our application services and even we can make a private network there to make the server to server communication with wire speed. Local ISP and data centers also provides spam filtering through their central spam filtering services as they use to host hundreds of websites and email domains. We can purchase subscription from them either we use our own host or their server we will assign MX record accordingly. In the third design is the cloud-based deployment. Cloud providers 
provides all sort of services. We can deploy our hardware. We can rent from them. Uh, we can deploy physical spam filter appliance or virtual appliance. They will provide everything, but definitely with a good price. Cloud-based solutions is not appropriate in terms of cost uh, for a very large organization because ultimately it costs a lot. If you have small organization, we can even purchase subscription-based service from them. If your server resides on-premise, we have to configure cloud-based spam filter to route mail to our local mailbox server. So these are the common incoming spam filter deployment methods. We have to choose carefully after analyzing our requirements and investment involved with it. Hope you got a good picture about the scenarios. Time to time, I will show you how to implement anti-spam systems in these scenarios. So this is it for today. If you want to read more about uh, these design scenarios, you can read my blog post that I have uh, shown you at the beginning, incoming spam filter deployment. I have elaborately described this three scenario here. So thank you for being with me and if you still didn't subscribe to my channel, please subscribe. So I'll see you on the next video. Bye.